The Motorola Droid X runs on Android 2.1, but we're told by late summer it should get Android 2.2. And it's already pretty quick, but Android 2.2 should make it even quicker. The X runs a variation of Motorola Blur that officials have been reluctant to call Blur, actually, but it retains that same core concept of taking all your different various uh, social points of communication and interaction and aggregating them into a single place or single places to help you get the important information without having to go every which direction. If you read my review of the Motorola Click, which was the first phone that had Motorola Blur on it, you'll see I like the concept, but I thought the execution had a bunch of shortcomings, and Motorola's really answered a lot of them in here. Uh, before it was, here are all your different social networks and emails and everything, we're going to organize them into happenings, which are, you know, status updates from your friends, and messages, which are direct communication from between you and your friend and there was really no customization it was these are the accounts all right we're putting them here and they're going to be this big so and that's only really one dimension of blur and so just to show you that if we long press we get the Motorola widgets and that's where a lot of these core uh, blur functions would come into play let's go ahead and go into messages see now right when I see this I get to select what the title of the widget is, how long it will keep these items there for, uh, and I can select all services, or I can say, you know what, I just want to receive, uh, you know, text messages and Facebook for my direct communication uh, in this particular widget, and I can be done with it. And then not only that, this is really cool. Before it would just be there, and you'd have no choice. This time I can move it where I want to and you can see I can resize it. So if you're not on it and you just want to resize it, long press, let it go and I can make it bigger. Now it'll show you, you know, how big you can make it. It'll only let you do a certain number of boxes, but you can resize it to how you want, which is really cool. Now I could go ahead and whoops. Resize this to make it that big do another one that's messages and have this one just be Twitter so and I could re you know I could name it Twitter and then put these ones up here and right now it doesn't have a title in there if I make it a little bigger it would so this could say Twitter on that and you can really customize so that's really cool that's for messages let's show you what would do if we had um, happenings which are basically just, you know, tweets and social updates from your friends. So again, you can choose the title, and let's change the orientation on this, uh, and you can choose what services you want to get information from your friends. Right now, I just have Facebook and Twitter on here, but let's say I want but all of them. So now, I can move this, make it bigger, and I want Facebook to take up a bunch, and it only lets you take up, I guess, a certain number of squares but um, you can see it will it will resize it and you can move it move it to other pages and you know put it wherever you want to it's not only where you get your information from but also who you get it from that you might want to customize especially on your home screen when you want to see the most pertinent information so sure I want Facebook information and Twitter information but not from everybody so I want to select my contacts I can choose groups or choose contacts now I could go ahead and select only the specific people that I want to get information from in this widget so I just go through and select specific people and that's what will show in this widget which is pretty cool that you can um, customize exactly who sees it. The other thing I can do is make a group manually in my contacts and select just to get information from that group. So here is a uh, social networking thing that only shows social networking from members that I've identified in my family. Pretty cool. The resizing of these widgets is available on a whole bunch of different elements. You can see the clock here. I can resize that and make it smaller or a little bigger, make it the date in there too. Uh, my calendar, so I can move this there and it dynamically moves other things around it. <clears throat> uh, so 
there's the weather here, so you can change the size of the weather widget. There's a whole bunch of stuff, and it all allows you to resize it. So I just want to say props to Motorola for listening to the community, hearing what the problems with their software were, and instead of saying, you know, we're going to do it how we want it, they really altered their software uh, to improve the user experience based on what the users wanted. So definitely an, ex an improved experience. I also really like the folders in Motorola Blur. You can see uh, recent and statuses are just like uh, messages and happenings. So if I go ahead and do statuses as a folder and you know just put it somewhere and select it, it actually brings up in folder style the latest status updates from my friends that I can go ahead and jump into. Here's one from Cyanogen and then I can see uh, you know his contact info from his status updates. What you see up here are called contact quick tasks and they're another Motorola widget that allow you to pick certain people and in this case we'll just do uh, one of these so I don't reveal phone numbers but um, you can select certain tasks you know call them text message them look at your history uh, and select it and then if they had a picture from Facebook or whatever it would be there and you can do this stuff directly from this page so um, if I go ahead and press work it'll ask me do I wanna call them I could enable one touch calling and then Let's end this call really quick. And now, if I do call from here, the widget, it would just call them directly, which is great if you have people you call uh, all the time. So here I've showed you one way I think it'd be really cool to reorganize it, and I would actually put this on the screen farthest to the right, just so you make sure you don't ask accidentally quick call or quick text somebody. But I put, you know, my sister, a couple friends on here, and the cool thing here is I can long press again and then change the orientation of it. So personal, and then it will do, you know, only one task. Personally, I prefer this horizontal thing and have them just going up and down. But you could just have, you know, one by one faces there. Uh, and set it up all sorts of different ways however you like but this is a pretty convenient tool for uh, setting up things you do often and getting to them really quickly I will add that while the experience has changed uh, the actual look could use a little bit of work like there's the clock widget if I hold that down and make it bigger it, uh, I mean that's okay looking I guess and make it even bigger and it's just funky looking so I mean, it's just a little bit too basic for me. I think they could, um, they've got the concept down much better. This resizing is awesome, but if they could sexy it up a little bit, it'd be really, really good. Now, let me show you a lot of the small things that make Motorola Blur or whatever you want to call it on the Motorola Droid X pretty cool. Starting with, if you go to Menu, Settings, Language and Keyboard, input method you can see that swipe is pre-installed on the device and for those that don't know what swipe is exactly it is a uh, a different way to to type without pressing here and there you actually sw swipe I'm not a big fan of swipe but I know some people swear by it so just if you want to know let's see if we can type swipe really quick swipe is available and it actually works pretty good so swipe is on the Motorola Droid X on the lock screen we're used to swiping right to unlock it but in this version you can actually swipe left again and turn all the sound off or swipe left once more and turn the sound back on pretty cool you notice at the bottom you've got the call app drawer which shows all your apps and contacts which will let you see you know a list of your contacts uh, but if you swipe from one side to another you'll see it's a quick menu of all seven screens so I could quickly jump to the far left screen if I wanted to there are a bunch of options in the settings double tap to silence tap twice to silence the ringer uh, smart profile face down so you just put your phone face down and it will switch it to vibrate instead of ring in the application section you can actually customize an action to take place when you double tap the home button so at the bottom here I right now I have it said as camera but I could make it you know SMS so now I'm you know on some random screen and I double press home and it will open up a text message pretty cool so you can customize this home button to do whatever you'd like the battery manager is pretty cool and it allows you to set a battery profile for performance battery saver mode and those are the two extremes and smart mode will actually allow you to customize it 
for w how your day is and at certain times uh, it, you know the data will not be continuous and it will update much less frequently in the background so without a d-pad sometimes it's hard to put the cursor exactly where you want by tapping your finger so here I'm in a Yahoo email if I select somewhere you'll see that bullet come up if I actually hold it down it'll allow me to put the cursor exactly where I want to. Now I had some problem with this. Uh, it wouldn't work exactly as advertised, but it's a great idea and uh, and it can help out. All these Motorola widgets that are called Toggle are pretty cool too. You can see if I select it, it's just this little square and it doesn't do anything but allow you to turn a setting on and off without having to jump in and out of any application. So you can see I have them all lined up over here so you can just change your settings on the fly without having to uh, you know, actually going into the settings of the phone. Pretty cool. So that's a quick overview of the Motorola Droid X software, which is Android 2.1 on Motorola Blur or Anti-Blur or whatever you want to call it. Essentially, I just wanted to show you that Motorola is really moving in the right direction. They've listened to consumers. And you're now able to customize Blur or customize, you know, your system of not only what accounts, but where you put your widgets, how big the widgets are, from whose information the widgets are pulling. And uh, and it's a really nice experience. Now, it's not perfect. It's still got a lot of work visually. Usually it isn't all that appealing. There's still some issues. For example, if you might want to use the uh, official Twitter app, and if you use Motorola's Twitter app and uh, and the official Twitter app, it'll duplicate accounts and stuff. So there's still a few things to work out. But all in all, this is definitely a, a move in the right direction, a step in the right direction, and it's only part of the customizations uh, Motorola's done for this phone. Uh, there's stuff in the camera, there's stuff actually all throughout the device that really uh, make it a, a much better phone than previous Motorola phones that weren't vanilla Android. So uh, definitely an improvement. Uh, this is something that will get out of the user's way, so if you don't really want to use any of their custom elements in terms of social networking and whatnot, you can just remove them, delete them. You don't have to sign in to a special Blur account or anything like that. Uh, so definitely nice to see Motorola improving their software. They've got a long way to go, uh, but they're headed in the right direction.